What's up, y'all? Crystal here, and I'm back with some tea. Y'all, I get excited every time I press record because when I go through a time of missing or being inconsistent, the Lord shows me his grace and favor and tells me, okay, you can share this. <laughs> and then that gets me back on doing the things that I really enjoy. So, so excited. Welcome back to the Tea with Crystal. The T stands for the testimony. So when you see that title, you see tea, but I mean like get your favorite drink, let's sip some tea, you know, let's talk about what the Lord is doing right now in my life, right? But hold on one second. So I wanted to share some words of encouragement with you today and something that the Lord has been telling me and I almost missed it. And so this is based off of the scripture in Genesis, I believe it's 28 when Jacob, um, was traveling to go see Laban, I believe. Um, and on his journey, he stopped and he went to sleep, right? And as he was sleeping, he was dreaming and he saw a vision of like the stairwell, the staircase going up to heaven. And he saw angels descending and ascending. And then the Lord met him there. And the Lord, the scripture says that the Lord was standing over and beside him. And the more and more I read this scripture, this, this, this chapter and meditate on it more and more, I'm just like, man, because I'm in a moment where that is what God has been saying to me. Like, surely I am in this place. Because after that, when Jacob woke up, like he was in such shock of the dream or the vision that he saw that he was like, surely God was is in this place and I almost missed it. And so I want to encourage you, like the current place that you're in right now, it could be physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, you know, God is doing something in your life right now. I want you to read that scripture and declare that over your life and say, surely God is in this place because he does not want you to leave this place empty handed. Like he has something for you there in this place and he does not want you to leave and you miss it and you leave this place empty handed, meaning he has something to exchange with you. He has something to exchange with you in this place. And so wherever you're at, you may feel like, I don't want to be here. Why am I here? I didn't want to come here. Lord, I was trying to do my best to my best to avoid this place, but you still had me to come into this place. God wants you to know that it's a safe place and it's a refuge and it's a place that he brought you to to show you that he is there and you're about to meet. All right. So Ooh, distractions. Okay, God doesn't want you to miss him, okay? And I definitely don't need to miss this moment. So I had to pause. I got a little bit of music playing in the background. But anyway, so I was able to pull up the scripture, Genesis 28. I encourage you to read the whole chapter, but the verse is verse 16. And so it says, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, nope, sorry, I went too far. Um, let's start at, so just to give a little bit of context, Jacob was told to go to, um, he was told to go to the city where Laban is cause he wasn't supposed to marry a Canaanite woman. So he was following orders from, um, his father. And as he was going, he had a dream at Bethel. And when he went to sleep, he saw a stairway. So this is verse 12. It said he had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth and its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And there above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Verse 16 says, when Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. 
He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So first I want to declare that the place that you're in right now, you will say, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. And you will leave that place saying, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And that's verse 16 and verse 17, Genesis 28. And um, listen, y'all, I'm even getting, oh my God, something now as I read that. Because even going back in this place where you are resting, it's like you're at a rest stop. And you may be uncomfortable or you may be coming out of the phase of discomfort in this place. And now you're finally learning to rest like Jacob did. Jacob stopped and he rested in this place. And in order for you to rest in God, you really have to say, okay, God, I give you a yes for you to do whatever you need to do in this place. Now, it's a different version that says that. There above it stood the Lord. But there's another version that said the Lord stood over him and beside him. And I believe that's the that's the NLT version. So let's see here really quick. So the let's see here. Cause y'all know we have so many different versions of the Bible. I will find that version and I will tag it below because I don't want to hold y'all. But so much revelation in this. And I'm encouraging you to begin to rest in this place that you're in right now. I want you to surrender every thought that you had about the place that you're in where you're trying to find all of the wrongs. You're trying to see everything wrong with this place. But what God has done is he sent you to a place that is safe and he wants you to rest so he can show you his glory, like the ascension and the de descending of angels in this place. He wants you to rest in that and see that and have peace in that. That he is there with you. So it goes on to say in verse 13 that the ground you are lying on belongs to you. I'm giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth, and they will spread out in all directions, to the west and the east, to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you and I will protect you wherever you go. One day I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised. Oh. Y'all. Just listen to what God wants to give. Like, listen to the scripture and visualize what God says he's giving you in this place. He doesn't want you to leave empty handed. So you need to rest in the fact that God is doing a work there and that he wants to fill your hands up with so much blessings. It belongs to you where you're at. It belongs to you and he wants you to walk in authority like he wants you to walk in the fullness of God in this place so it may feel hard and challenging right now because there are things that you have to get rid of you have to let go of and you have to open up your hands to receive the things that God has for you in this place because this place is truly a blessing that you're where you're at right now where you're at right now it's a blessing as you rest in this place and you say yes and you Open your hands. What can you do when your hands are open? You're opening them up to receive. What the scripture says is that I'm giving this to you. It's yours. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. So don't miss what God is trying to do for you right now in this place that you're in. Whether it's mentally emotionally spiritually like God wants to build you up he wants to fill you up and first he has to empty you out just like Jacob had to leave the place and begin the journey you have to leave that place and begin the journey and go to this place 
and then rest there and see it as a refuge and as a place where God is like, okay, now I can fill you up. Now you can open your hands to receive because you're not distracted. You can see me now. You can hear me now. That is what he wants to do for you. So you may be in a moment where you feel like, okay, it's time for me to go, but not quite. It's because he has not filled up your hands yet for you to leave. He doesn't want you to leave this place not having what you need. He also doesn't want you to leave this place taking things that you don't need to take with you. So Jacob left home. He went to this place. He rested there. And as he, were, as he was resting, God said, this belongs to you. This belongs to your descendants. Like this is a generational thing. This place where you're at right now is a marker of something to impact not only you, but generations. And it's not up to you to fully understand because like Jacob said, he said, surely God was in this place and I did not, like I almost missed it. So he wasn't even understanding, like he wasn't expecting that at all. And there are going to be things that God is going to do that's going to be so unexpected, but you have to rest to receive the vision, to hear God, and to see him, to know what he's doing. To hear him and to see him, you have to have your hands open, ready to receive. So don't leave that place empty-handed. I just want to encourage you, y'all, because I know exactly what you're going through. I know where you are. Like, I could just feel it. Like, I, I don't know you personally, but just... Eight months ago for me, I was in a position where I was like, God, I, I have been trying to avoid coming here. You saw me fighting not to come to this place. Why am I here? Like every door was shutting. Nothing was going well for me. Nothing was happening for me. No matter how much I tried, I was like right at the door and everything shut off. And I had no choice but to come to this physical location where I'm at right now. I left Georgia to come to South Carolina and I was doing everything. I was like, I'm fighting. Devil, you are a liar. I'm not coming. <laughs> I was fighting and still ended up in this place. And here I am eight months later and I can declare that scripture over my life and see that as I began to rest, just not just in my mind and in my spirit, in my heart and allow God to begin to do his work. Now I can say, surely God is in this place and he wants to give me this land where I'm at. He wants to give me this land. And there are things that he has given me. He has filled me up. I had to drop some things out of my hand, out of like, just every part of me to be able to receive, open my hands and receive. And he kept telling me that. He was like, you have to open your hands, open up your hands. You have them closed. And they were closed because I was fighting not to go to this place. But what I've learned is like, you have to see God in every single thing. You have to see him in every single thing. You don't want to miss him. You don't want to miss. It's so critical. Like the it's it's the time is sensitive right now you can't afford to miss him you don't you want to be saying surely God was in this place and I almost missed it but then you want to thank God for not allowing you to miss it because what he's going to give you is going to be such a blessing a blessing for generations to come your descendants that are going to spread to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. Like it said, the land is yours. Say yes and receive it. And receive it. <laughs> so that's my tea, y'all. That's just what God has been doing with me. He keeps telling me, don't leave this place empty-handed. Don't leave it empty-handed. And so he's doing so many things for me right now where it's like, Lord, I don't want to miss you. I just don't want to miss you. Whatever you're doing, mentally, physically, emotionally. Um... Just don't miss him during this time. Keep your hands open and you will not leave empty handed. It'll all be worth it. It'll all be worth it because surely God is in this place. 
So thank y'all for watching. I will tell more about this testimony as, you know, time goes along. Just look out for my videos. Subscribe to the channel. I will post every Tuesday and Thursday the Tea with Crystal. So make sure when you do come, watch, have your tea, have your coffee, have your favorite drink because it's going to be like a girl chat. And we're going to start chatting about, like, just, you know, not missing God, what he's doing, um, just having the capacity to receive the fullness of God, you know, during this time. So I hope this tea was some good tea for you. It was a blessing. And come back, comment below. Let me know if you read Genesis 28, what you got from it. If this was something that you needed to hear, just know that God is with you and he has your back right now. He got your back right now, no matter how hard it is, how challenging, how overwhelming. He has got your back. He is in this place. Okay. So I can't, I can't say it. I, I just feel like I got to keep saying it. Like just declare those scriptures over yourself. Okay. All right.